Hi everyone, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we will discuss the problem serialize and deserialize a binary tree. Now, this particular problem has been asked in companies like Flipkart and Microsoft. So let us understand the requirements of this problem and how we can solve it. So basically, the problem says that we have to serialize a given binary tree into an array so that later it can be restored and deserialized. So what you have to do is you have to complete two functions here. Firstly, you will be given the root of a binary tree, and what you have to do is you have to serialize it. What does it mean when I say that you have to serialize a binary tree? So by the process of serialization, we basically mean that we have to represent that whole tree in a array format. Okay. And then what do we mean by deserialization? So basically when we have to do deserialization, so whatever array we, uh, we are using to represent that particular tree, we have to generate the same tree from that array. So that is the process of deserialization. So let us try and do a dry run so that we can understand better. So what we will do here is let's talk about the serialization process first. So there can be multiple ways of doing serialization. But what I will be following is I'll be following the pre-order process of serialization. Okay. What is pre-order process? So in pre-order, first of all, we write the root data. Then after that, we call for the left and then we call for the right. Okay. This is what we do. So let's say that if I have the sample example, let's say as one, two, three. Suppose if I've got what one, then this node is two and then this node is three. Okay, if this is the particular tree that I have got right now. So what will happen uh, here is initially when we are starting off, so my root will be here. So I will call the recursive pre-order traversal for this particular tree and I will keep a V array, let's say with me or any array. Uh, okay, now what, what will happen is initially whenever whichever uh, root I am at, I will put its data inside my vector or inside my array. And then I'll call on the left and then after that on the right. So initially I'm at the root node that is one. So I'll push one in my answer uh, or in my array. And then after that, what I will do is I'll move, I'll call on the left. When I call on the left, so the next call is made for the node as two. Okay. So now we have called for the node two and it is behaving as the current root. So what I will do is I will uh, push two inside as my, uh, in my answer array or in my array. And after this, we will call on the left. So when we call on the left, so now the node is null. So whenever the node is null, so we can indicate it by using the sign as minus one. So let's say I'm indicating it with the sign as minus one. So you can see here that with respect to two, first of all, I process the root that is two, then the left, and now I'll call on the right. So when I call on the right, I encounter null again. So when, when we encounter null, so again, we will push minus one here, indicating a null node. Then after this, you can see that for the node two, it has been processed. Its left has been processed and its right has also been processed. So now when we go back up, so with respect to one, one has been processed, processed, uh, that is the root node itself and its left has been processed. So now we call on the right. So when we call on the right, we call for the node three. Now we will process the root node that is three at that point and then we will call on the left. When we call on the left, it is null. So since the node is null, so we will print minus one uh, in the answer array. And then after that, we will call on the right because uh, three has been processed, left has been processed. Now let's process the right. So when we process the right, so it is null. So basically since it is null, so we'll put minus one here inside our answer. Okay. So you can clearly see here guys that the thing is that we have got one, two, minus one, minus one. Then we have got three, minus one and minus one because initially the node was one. Okay. Then it's left was two. Then two's left was null. So we have minus one there. Then two's right was also null. So we have minus one here. Then after that, uh, after that one has been processed. Its left has been processed, so we process the right. So three is there. Then after that, three's left is null, so we put minus one. Three's right is null, so we put minus one. So this is how we have done the serialization of the given binary tree in a particular tree here. Now, after this part is uh, done, so let's write the code for serialization process. Okay. So what we will be doing here is first of all, like you can say that uh, when we are given the serialization array. So we can first of all do what we can declare, let's say an answer array. So let's name it as vector. Let me increase the size of the font. So we can declare it as vector in let's say answer. And what we can do is we can call the pre-order traversal. Okay. Uh, in which we'll be obviously serializing. So first of all, I will be calling what I'll be passing the root and I'll be passing the answer array. Now, once this pre-order function will be over, then my answer will be storing the serialized format of the given binary. So that I will need to return. Okay, now what we will do is we will uh, simply say that we can call a void uh, pre-order function, let's say, okay, and then here we can pass the node star root, that is the root of the current tree, and we can also pass what? We can also pass the vector int answer, which will be storing the serialized format of the tree in a single array, okay. 
Now, whenever we reach a node, suppose which is null, so then what do we do? Whenever a node is null, then we can say that inside our answer array, we are going to push back what? We are simply going to push back the value as minus one, indicating that the node does not exist, and then we can simply return because this particular null node will not have any children. Otherwise, if we are at a particular node which exists, then in that case, inside our answer node, what we are going to do is we are going to push back the current uh, node data. That is the root data that we have. We are going to push it, and then we will call what? We will call the pre-order function. Okay, for what? For the root, uh, like we'll call the pre-order function for the root left uh, because we are going to call on the left, and we'll pass the answer as well. Then after this, we'll call the pre-order function on what? On the root uh, so right node, and then we'll pass the answer array. Okay, so we are going to do this, and this is how my serialization process. Would be completed, and this would take how much order of n time only because we are traversing each and every node exactly once. Now, once this part is done, so now I need to deserialize. So let us deserialize this array only. Okay, suppose that we have got this uh, array which is containing all the nodes or the uh, serialized uh, or, or the tree in the serialized format. Now let us try to deserialize it. So let me write this once again, and uh, then I will tell you. how we are doing it so basically suppose that we have got this uh, uh, vector or this list where we have got 1 then we have got 2 then we have got minus 1 then we have got minus 1 okay then we have got 3 then we have got minus 1 and minus 1 okay so what i can do is first of all i can declare a global index for myself now what will that index do that index will help me to keep a track of the index of the array so initially my index will be where initially my index will be at this particular starting uh, element of the array okay now whichever uh, index that i am at currently i will say what whichever index currently i am at i will simply say that it is basically my root so i will consider it is as as the current root so i'll make one as the node here okay then after that we will call for the next index so uh, now we like uh, once this node has been made so i have used the pre order approach pre order is what first of all root then after that left and then after that right so once i have made my root node so the next call when i am making so i need to uh, i need to say what that whatever next call i am making so whatever node will be returned whatever node format will be returned it will be basically uh, attached on my left so now what will happen is when we will call for this node 2 so basically uh, the node 2 will be made here and whatever will be made that will be attached on the left of one okay so this node 2 will be made and then after that uh, my index will proceed further so then my index uh, goes to this particular value which is null minus 1 so if the value is minus 1 so with respect to 2 i'm calling uh, i have called for the first time so first of all i'm calling on the left so basically this node is uh, minus 1 indicating that it is null so basically it will return null and whatever is return that will get attached on the left of 2 okay then after this we'll go to the next index and now when we have called for the next index so basically we have called for the right of 2 so basically whatever node we will make we'll uh, attach it on the right of 2 so now since its value is minus 1 so we'll attach uh, like we'll return minus 1 and uh, uh, we'll return null and null will get attached to the right of 2 then after this you can see that my this much process is over because the node 2 has been made then its left is uh, made and its right is made so you can see here that uh, the current root has been processed its left has been processed its right has been processed so now it's time to return this particular uh, node so i'll return this particular node 2 which is containing the left and the right child as null and with respect to 1 it will get attached on the left because it was called on the left so with respect to 1 on the left of 1 the node 2 will be attached uh, with the left child as null as well as the right child as null then after this what will happen my index will proceed further and my index will point to the node 3 and with respect to 1 its left call is over so i'll call on the right so when i call on the right i am at the node 3 so i'll make this particular node 3 here okay once i have made this particular node 3 so my index will proceed and whatever node i am going to make it will be attached on the left of 3 uh, so since the node is uh, null uh, minus 1 so i will attach null here so null will be return and then this will be attached to the node 3 okay on the left then after that the next index is what the next index uh, so i'll call on the right of 3 and whatever node i'm going to make now now i will attach on the right of 3 so this node value is minus 1 indicating that it is null so i'll i'll declare and uh, i'll make the node uh, i'll return the node as null here and it will atta uh, get attached on the right so this node right will be null then after this you can see that uh, with respect to the node 3 it has been made its left is done its right is also done so it's time to return this particular node so when i'll return this particular node 3 so its left child is null right child is also null so whatever i'm returning it will be attached to the right of 1 because i had called for the right of 1 uh, okay so whatever is returned whatever data is returned it will be attached on the right so with respect to 1 its right will be updated with the child as 3 and the left and right of 3 as null okay 
Then after this, you can see that with respect to one, it is made, its left is done, its right is also done. So I'll return this node. So when I return this node, so you can see that indirectly the same tree is getting returned. So first of all, I had done what? I had serialized the given tree in a vec in a list in a in a single one D array. And now I have done this deserialization process as well. Okay. Also, one more thing that when you reach the end index, then you can simply return null, indicating that your array is exhausted. Okay. So let us try and uh, complete our uh, other function that is the deserialize function. So in this particular deserialize function, guys, what we are going to do first of all is let me uh, increase the indexing area. Yeah. So firstly, I'll declare a index variable initially as zero. Okay. Which will be indicating the current index uh, of the array that I am at. Okay. Now after this part, what I will do here is I will check that suppose if my index becomes equal to what? If my index becomes equal to the last index. So if I exhaust all the uh, indexes of the array. So if I'm at the end of the array, then I directly need to return what? I directly need to return nothing but null here. Otherwise, what will I do? Otherwise, I'll say that the current value will be what? Current value will be nothing but let's say a uh, the value at this index. So the element at this index will be a of index. Okay. And then I'll make the node of it. So I'll de declare it as the current root node. So node star root will be equal to what? New node and I'll pass this value. So I'll make this new node and then after that what I will do is I'll call on the left and the right. So I'll call on uh, I'll call the deserialize function here. Okay. I'll call the deserialize function for a on the left side when I'm calling first of all for the left. So whatever data it will return or whatever node it will return it will be attached on the left. So I'll say that roots left will be equal to what roots left will be equal to deserialize of a and then after that what I will do is I'll call for the roots right when I'm calling for the right. So whatever will be returned will be attached on the right. So I'll call the deserialize function for the node a okay on the right so once i have uh, like once i have done this then i will do what then i'll simply return the root node here okay now let us try and uh, compile this code so this is how we have to do it like basically i've told a dry run as well okay so it is giving me some kind of segmentation error so i guess i might be making some kind of mistake here yeah so basically the thing is that uh, i have not uh, catered the condition that whenever my value will be suppose equal to what if my Let's say my value is equal to what? If it is equal to minus one. So in that case, I need to return which node? I need to return the node as null. Okay. So this is one condition that I had missed while writing the deserialize code. Now let's try and compile it again to check if it is working fine or not. Okay. Still, I'm getting some kind of segmentation error here. So let's check the deserialize code. So what I'm doing is if I reach the end, then I'm returning null. Okay. So what I've not done is now I have not increased the index. So I should do index plus plus because after using this index, I should move to the next index. Now let's try and compile again. So yes, you can see now it is working fine. So the basic mistake was that I forgot to increase the index of the uh, array one by one. Okay. So let's now submit it. It should get accepted for deserialize and serialize both functions. And you can see that my code is uh, able to pass all the test cases. So I hope that you have understood this serialize and deserialize uh, tree problem clearly. And in case if you have any doubts, you can mention them in the comments. If you understood it clearly, please make sure to comment understood or clear in the chat. Thank you for, for uh, thank you for watching this video and keep coding, guys.